Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to Nolensburg Presbyterian Church. We are so glad that you found us online. And as you are worshiping today, right underneath your screen, it should say, show more. Click on that and you'll see a handful of hyperlinks. If, this is, if you are new and this is your first time, we really hope that you sign in to nolensburgchurch.org. Please give your name, your email, your number. And I, Pastor Curtis, will make it a priority this week to reach out and to welcome you to Christ Church here at Newlandsburg. Also, like us on Facebook. We have a lot of information there. And please do subscribe to our YouTube page. Download our app. It is filled with sermons, ways to give, our calendar, and also our Advent devotion, which is based on the poem from Howard Thurman. And it is written from Presbyterians around the country, and I'm sure that you will appreciate it here in this last week. And if you are not receiving this devotion via email, or if you're not receiving our emails, please check your spam and make sure that NPC email at Nolensburg Church is in your address book. That will be a huge help to us. You have heard last week in light of the Pennsylvania Department of Health's recommendations, and with meeting with our own COVID-19 task force, uh, our Christmas Eve in-person worship service has been canceled. However, we will premiere an online version of the Lessons and Carols worship service that you have experienced in our sanctuary at 12 a.m. noon on Christmas Eve, and then it is on demand anytime afternoon on Christmas Eve. Our preschool is postponed until January 11th. Our gym is closed until January 4th. Our online worship services will continue to premiere at 9 a.m. Today there is Sunday school beginning at 8 a.m. and then finishing at 10 a.m. All the rest of our Sunday school classes, kiddos and faith and contemporary uh, issues begin at 10 a.m. via Zoom. If you are not receiving those emails, Please go to those hyperlinks underneath where you're watching and email either our director of children and family minister or our youth director, and they'll send you the Zoom link. There will not be any Sunday school on Sundays, December 27th and January 3rd. Advent Adventure is going to happen today, and all ages are invited to tune in via Zoom at 4 p.m. today. There will be the reading of the Christmas story with our own students. And there will be student musicians playing some Christmas carols throughout. And then we have invited a family to lead us in a Christmas carol sing at the end of this event. And please do have a light source, a candle or a glow stick, because we'll end the Christmas festivities with the singing of Silent Night. Again, all ages are welcome. You should have received this in an email blast, the Zoom link that is, but if you have not, check your spam folder or please email directorce at nolensburgchurch.org and she will get you the Zoom link. For prayer requests, continue to call the church office or email nolensburgpresby at comcast.net. Loaves and Fishes remains open. Please continue to financially support that ministry as we're seeing an increase in families coming each and every day. Praise be to God. We have a full slate of deacons, and we're almost, we need one more elder. It's only a two-year term. You may be that leader that Christ is calling to serve the 
Nolensburg and Christ Church. We need four more uh, members of our nominated committee last year, but the rest of the slate is filled, praise be to God. Our Stephen ministry continues to be active. If you are feeling isolated, depressed, lonely, or you know someone who is, please let me know and I will confidentially get that person a Stephen minister who is a Christian trained caring listener for times of need, loss, and transition. Friends, certainly, if this worship service blesses you today, we ask that you generously give to support Christ's ministry here at Nolensburg. Friends, let us worship the living God. The scriptures say, God showed his love for us by sending his only son into the world so that we might have life through him. Why do we light these candles? The first candle reminds us of hope. The second candle reminds us of peace. The third candle will remind us of joy. The, the fourth candle, candle reminds us, us of love. love. John wrote, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. God has really given us a great gift. In remembering God's love this Advent, perhaps we can be more loving. Loving the Lord our God with all our heart, and by loving our neighbors as ourselves. A song says, light the Advent candle for, think of joy forevermore. Christ child in a stable born, gift of love that Christmas morn. Come, let us celebrate that gift of love. Let us worship, worship God. God. Come to us. 
spoke to Mary, do not be afraid, and yet, O oh Lord, we find ourselves paralyzed by fear of what we do not know. Forgive us of our sins, O oh Lord, and give us the faith of Mary to respond to your grace with lives of grateful praise. Let us hear the good news that she first heard. Light is breaking, love is coming, the world is about to turn. God's goal for you as Jesus Christ. To invite people to Christ, to participate in Christ's life, to go and continue Jesus' ministry. Friends, the good news of the gospel is we are forgiven in Jesus Christ. As God commands, go and forgive, live at peace. <laughs> It's all about getting ready when something special is coming. You know, Christmas is coming this week and we're all really, really excited about it. And the same thing kind of happened on the first Christmas. There was this lady named Mary and she was really young and she was getting ready to be married to someone named Joseph. And in the night, this crazy thing happened. An angel, his name was Gabriel, came to her and said, you know what? You're going to have a baby. And that baby's going to be named Jesus, and he is going to save all of the world. You know, for Mary, I can only imagine that it was pretty scary. 
maybe a little bit weird to have somebody come and tell you this story in a dream and say, your baby is going to be the most important person to ever walk this earth. So I was thinking about Christmas. And, you know, in Christmas, we spend a lot of time getting ready. It's like everybody's rushing everywhere. And even this year, when things are a little bit different, we're all still trying to do what we can to get ready for Christmas. So in our family, we always decorate a Christmas tree. We go Christmas shopping. We put up our decorations. We bake cookies. We think about ways to help people who might need it and who may need some Christmas presents. We even talk about getting some presents for this guy, for Simba here. And so I was thinking about, you know, Mary had to spend some time getting ready for this baby. And we're spending time getting ready for this baby. But we're trying to remember that Christmas isn't just about the presents and about Santa. It's about remembering that Jesus came to save all of us. And God sent him. God knew that we needed him. And he told Mary to be ready. So I hope you guys are ready for Christmas and you have a very merry, happy time with your family. And just remember, God helped us to get ready for things. So you try and get ready for Jesus. Let's pray. Dear God, help us to remember that this season is about so much and that Mary had a lot to get ready for and that we have a lot to get ready for too because you're most precious son came to save us from our sins. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Samuel chapter 7 verses 1 through 11 as well as verse 16. Now when the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, see now I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, go, do all that you have in mind for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people of Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people of Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people of Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more, and evil doers shall afflict them no more as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people of Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The Word of God.
are so glad that you are worshiping with us today. Welcome. It is my hope, it is my prayer that you hear God's word today. We here at Nolensburg believe that God's goal for you is friendship with God. And we hope this sermon says that clearly. Today I want to talk about how we are all miracles. We are all miracles. Miracles. I'm going to let that hang for a moment. We are all miracles if and only if we bring God into the world. The family and I were having our daily devotions the other day. And Jesus spoke to us. You are the light of of the world. My eldest son asked, well, Daddy, isn't God the light? Let's think about Christmas Eve. When we sing Silent Night, we all receive and light our candles from the Christ candle, and then we share the light, and we pass it on to our neighbors. I believe this is what Jesus means when he says, you are the light of the world. When we treat people the way we want to be treated, we are God's light in the world. Like we will read in a moment, we are to be like Mary. We are to bring God into the world. Then my youngest son asked, is heaven somewhere in the sky. And I said, remember what Jesus taught us just the other day. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Another way to say this is that heaven is right in front of you. Just reach out and grab it. Turn around. Heaven is right in our presence. So it could possibly be in the sky. But I believe when we accept Christ as Lord and Savior, when we follow Jesus' way, Jesus wants us to believe and to experience heaven right in front of us. But it takes us to bring God into the world, to participate in the kingdom of God. Will you accept God's calling to bring God into the world. We are going to hear Mary's acceptance of God's calling. 
She does not have to accept the good news. She does not have to participate in in bringing God into the world. Neither do you. What will Mary choose? What will you choose? Listen now. For the Holy Spirit's calling God's word to you and to all the world as we read Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. Listen now for the Holy Spirit's calling. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And Gabriel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be, the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. And you will name him Jesus. He will be great. He will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And to his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born in you will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now, look, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Then Mary said to Gabriel, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The reading of God's word. Let us pray. Eternal and gracious Father, may we hear your word this day. Wash us clean of our doubts, of our fears, of our sin. And may we accept your calling to bring you into the world to participate in your kingdom on earth, to be your light, and to share it with everyone around us. Lord, may all those who hear this word this day accept your calling and bring you, our Lord and Savior, into the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What does it mean to be a child of God? What does it mean to be a miracle? The Bible teaches in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, see what love the Father has given to us, that we, should be called children of God, and that is what we are. I'm sure you're much like me, filled with doubt, filled with a sure and certain knowledge that I'm not living up to expectations, filled with memories of doing wrong when I could have done right. Filled with memories of not bringing God's light into the world. Filled with a feeling of not being worthy. 
I believe that is where Mary sits. Mary is 12 or 13 years old when Gabriel approaches her. Maybe she is alone praying when the angel gives this message to her. Mary, you, you are going to bring God into the world. Any of you listening right now, will you accept God's call to bring God into the world? But with Mary, we too often reply, no, 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 no. It, it couldn't possibly be me. How can this be? This is impossible. The world seems daunting right now with new restrictions in place because COVID cases are spiking. Please keep in fervent prayer our first line workers, our hospital workers, our delivery people, as we continue this battle. Many are facing hunger. Many are facing evictions. Yet, the stock market keeps rising. If you have a job and money in the stock market, things seem okay. But if you don't, Does Christ call upon us to address the ever-growing wealth gap, not only in this country, but around the world? Does the Lord call us to address that part of the wealth gap here in this country exists because of historic and systemic racism in our housing policies. Does Christ call us to address systemic racism? Our national denomination, the PCUSA, believes the Lord does. Redstone Presbytery, the Presbytery in which Nulensburg Presbyterian Church is a part of, believes Christ calls us. Just this past week, our session voted to become a Matthew 25 church because we believe Jesus calls us to address income inequality and systemic racism. The first step to finding a solution to any problem is admitting there is a problem. The next step our education, and calls to action. This involves risk. God calls Mary to bring God into the world with risk. Not only does she need to accept God's calling, she needs to tell Joseph she is pregnant. And the child is not exactly his. Not really something you want to hear from your wife. Joseph, he will take risk to bring God into the world. We need to take risk to bring God into the world. But that's not the end of the miracle. Gabriel tells Mary... The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Does Mary have a choice in this matter? The answer is certainly. Certainly, yes, she does have a choice. Any of us can choose not to do God's will. But if Mary says no, she denies her identity. She rejects her purpose. She will not bring God into the world. This choice is before any of us on a daily basis. 
Who do you say Jesus is? Will you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Will you bring God's light into the world? If you do not, you will deny your identity as a child of God. You will reject your purpose to do God's will. You will not participate in heaven on earth. Think back to Christmas Eve. And sharing the light. You do not want to remain in darkness. And darkness is not what God wants for any of us. God's goal for you and for me and for all people is to be in friendship with God. That is the reason for the Christmas season. God comes for you. Mary chooses to work with God to bring God into the world so that others may have friendship with God. When we think back to Christmas Eve and, and lighting from the Christ candle and sharing that light with our neighbor next to us, we are not to keep God's love to ourselves. The Lord desires for us to share and to pass it on, this too is our calling to invite others into friendship with God. How will you bring God into the world? Alicia Kamel has decided to bring God into the world. I only know about Alicia Kamel because I read an article about Mackenzie Scott the former wife of Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon. Mackenzie Scott has decided to donate $4.2 billion to organizations around the country. She made $23 billion this year alone and still has $60 billion remaining. Ms. Scott cited Alicia Kamel as an inspiration for her donations. Alicia Kamel began community organizing at age 14. In response to COVID, she sent a text message to her friends, seeing if anyone out there would begin to deliver groceries to those in her community that lost their jobs. She posted two Google Forms. One form was a sign-up sheet for those in Chicago, in her community, that needed help. And the other form was those who could offer help. Two days later, Alicia raised over $7,000 and began to deliver groceries. And delivering groceries really is the key to this story. Many in Chicago's poorest areas are in what's called a food desert. And if you look this phrase up, Food deserts exist all through the United States. And for many reasons tied to systemic racism, grocery stores no longer exist in some of the poorest areas in our country. To get groceries, in many of these communities, people need to take buses to go outside of their community and haul those groceries back to their homes. Many in Chicago were raising money, but few, few were delivering groceries to people's homes. Alicia Kamel decided to bring God into the world. Miss Kamel says it's about communal living. We should be able to resource and depend on each other. God is calling you. Will you follow Jesus Christ? Will you be a miracle for your neighbor? How will you bring God into the world? I preach in the name of God the Father 
God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And P.S. Miracles involve risk. God assumed risk when coming to us as a dependent baby. Merry Christmas. Please pray with me. There have been a handful of deaths uh, of friends, of members here in the congregation, so our condolences go out uh, to a member who received news of the death of her favorite aunt, who was 92 and lived in Germany. A member asks for prayers for his cousins, who lost both of their parents about a week and a half ago due to COVID. They died within five days of each other, so please keep this member's cousins in your prayers. A member's family asks for prayers as they mourn uh, the member's son in or father-in-law, son's father-in-law, excuse me, uh, who passed away on December 16th from a heart attack while shoveling snow. He was only 72 and had no history of heart issues, so please keep that family in your prayers. Certainly for all of us Christians, it is our hope in the resurrection of Jesus Christ that those who have passed are in the warm and loving arms of our Lord and Savior this very moment. Let us keep those folks and those families in our prayers as they mourn the loss. Please keep a member's grandmother in your prayers who is 93 and has tested positive for covid So far, she is symptom-free. Praise be to God for that. But the nursing home where she lives has had 64 out of 80 residents test positive for COVID over the last few weeks. So please, please, please keep that uh, facility in your prayers. The sister of a member's wife resides in a nursing home as well and is also tested positive for COVID. A member is due for his second knee procedure on December 21st. However, the good news is he received a new job and just found out this past week. Another member will be having rotator cuff surgery on December 23rd. Please keep her in your prayers. And keep a member's dad in your prayers who was recently diagnosed with prostate cancer. We do have another birth within the congregation. A member celebrates the birth of her daughter. She was born on December 16th, 6 pounds, 10 ounces, and 19 and a half inches long. And we have proud grandparents as well who are members of this congregation. Praise be to God for it, and for them rather. 
And there are a lot of thank yous today. Uh, last month, I called the church office of member rights and spoke to our office manager about a family I know that was in need of food. COVID-19 has hit them hard. And with nine children who are no longer getting school lunches and with chronic health issues, they were short on both food and hope. Within 48 hours, my car was loaded with food and personal care items, and I was given a gift card for ferries as well as a gift card for gas. After purchasing produce, I delivered the bounty to the family who was beyond grateful for the food as well as the kindness of strangers. This was the first time I've come into close contact with our emergency food pantry and was amazed at the amounts and variety of food as well as the entire process. Thanks to all those who support this much needed program. I'm so grateful for our church family and the substance, hope that we carry together. And another member writes a thank you note. Hi, I wanted to extend my deepest, most sincere thanks for helping me and my family with food. It meant a lot to us and I can't say, I can't say thank you enough. I really appreciate the kind gestures in my time of need. And last but not least, another family says, hello, my family and I just wanted to thank you for the beautifully crocheted blanket. We recently brought our second little one home from the midwife center, and one of your blankets was included in our take-home bag. What a special surprise. We appreciate you taking the time to make such thoughtful gifts. Friends, we have a lot to be thankful for. Let us continue in prayer. Eternal and gracious Father, we are so thankful that you have called us into the faith of Jesus Christ and that you empower us by your Holy Spirit to continue Jesus' ministry through the Loaves and Fishes Food Bank, through our partners in Haiti, in Pine Springs Camp, through offering Sunday School via Zoom and keeping your church together. We are thankful for our wonderful staff who continues to create worship services online to invite people to Christ and to have your people participate in the life of Christ. Lord, in Jesus Christ, you teach us to pray for everything that is necessary for our bodies and souls. Lord, in Jesus... You teach us to even pray for our enemies. May we have the courage to bring you, O oh Lord, into the world. We ask that your Holy Spirit continue to be with our presidents and our Congress as they attempt to distribute the vaccine that we are so thankful that is coming. Lord, help our president and the president-elect smoothly transition power. Lord, we pray for all of our frontline workers who continue to battle COVID. Protect and keep them, give them energy and compassion and patience to care for their patients. Lord, equip us to continue to follow safety measures of wearing masks and washing hands and staying socially distant. Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit be with our Congress, that they will have the courage and initiative to create policy to address income inequality and systemic racism. Lord, help us to offer your mercy in the world. We thank you for coming to us as Jesus Christ as we prepare our hearts and minds for your arrival. And we are reminded of your will and your way each and every time we pray 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, now is the time to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Now is the time to generously give to Christ's church. And this is the time that we can also participate in helping to build a new church building in La Croix, Haiti, the mission that we have supported for over 30 years. And you have two ways to give as Haiti alternative gifts. You can support building that new church building, or you can support food distribution. Both are very much needed at this time to continue hope, the worship of God, and to continue Jesus' ministry of outreach in Haiti. There is a table right as you walk into the church building with these cards. Take a card, fill out the piece of paper that is there, how much you're going to donate, and we will make that happen. And then take the card and send it to someone in your name that you love and have thought of this Christmas season. Friends, please give generously. Of your justice burn. Why 
Friends, we are a Christ-centered community. And in joyful response to Christ's love for us, we worship God. We nurture disciples. We accept all as God's people. Now let us go in love and in service to further the kingdom of God.